everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Baseball Talk Radio Show. I'm Gary Mack, and I'm joined, as usual, with my co-host, the great Rich Baxter. Mr. Baxter, how are you on this frigid Sunday? Doing very well. Thank you very much for the introduction, Gary, and how are you today? I'm I'm very well uh, also, a little chilly. Um <laughs> And it doesn't look like we're going to be able to warm up over the TV by watching spring training baseball as they've canceled, what, the first week of games. Um, CBA still not signed. Their last meeting lasted 15 minutes, though they are supposed to have multiple uh, negotiations this week, so we'll see if anything comes out of it. They look like they're still miles apart, and some now there's some animosity building up. Yeah, miles apart. Rob Manford and Tony Clark still uh, with a rift between them, and uh, as you said, yeah, animosity building up on both sides of those camps, but also you have a third party into it now, the fans are starting to feel it as they postpone the first week of spring training games so far. They're lost to this uh, work stoppage or uh, lockout, if you want to call it that. And, uh, yeah, it's a shame. Um, some concessions were given up. Um, MLB Players Association dropped the push for universal two-year arbitration, uh, expanded the pre-arbitration bonus pool, and the latest CBA offer, and the MLB suggest a new C CBA would be having to be in place by the end of the month to begin the regular season on time. So already we've scrapped the first week of spring training. I was thinking of going again, as I did a couple of years ago, and uh, I'm in the same position I was then. And, I, you know, I was going to mention that because can you imagine the people that, that – plan to go every year uh i know we have a uh our friend barry who goes uh, has been going uh, you know he started going pretty regular um the last few years and then the pandemic kind of shut that down but he he knows people that that this is their vacation this is what they do every year they go down there or they're snowbirds and they go to florida Okay, they probably would have gone down anyway, but a lot of them, the focus is on going down and going to spring training camp, and now they can't do that. And, and as you said, you did it two years ago, and uh, it was the pandemic got you. Um, yeah. They closed it, the, I think, the day after you left or uh, uh, something like that, but... Um, so, uh, and as you said, you're thinking of going, but now you got to hold back on the reins and say, oh, I don't know, should I take the time now? You know, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And that's um, being without baseball and, you know, the previews, the magazines, they still aren't out. I, I kind of like to look forward to reading these, you know, the player previews and things like that. Um and they're not even out yet. So everything's pushed back so far. The fans are starting to get a little annoyed with it, with both sides. And here out of um, this lack of news comes word that Juan Soto of the Washington Nationals, uh, who's not a free agent until after the 24 season, 2024, has been said to have refused a $350 million contract that would have kept him a Washington national till about the age of 36. So uh, amazing uh, revelation there that he would refuse that kind of money. Yeah. In this day and age. And you know, what's bad about that is that comes out in the middle of the CBA. So it makes the players look even more greedy. Uh, you know, that uh, he turned down that kind of money and, and uh you know, it's almost like it's starting to get personal, though, between Clark and and Manfred. And I, I don't know what Manfred's doing. In the middle of all this, he comes out now with what the one writer has called the Great Reset. 
And it's a terrific article on ball9.com if you want to see it. And in essence, uh, the writer was told by an, a former executive that they want to destroy the minor league system by having development leagues so they don't have to pay salaries, health care, and staff retirement. So the whole idea is they just want to use the minor league facilities and, and get rid of all the minor league teams eventually and and have these development leagues around, I guess. And, um, you know, he cut the minor leagues and uh, did a deep cut in that. And now this, and it's just, I don't know what this man is doing. I honestly beginning to believe that he hates the game of baseball, that he has no clue about baseball at all, the history, uh, the majesty, whatever you want to call it, and his only interest is making money for the owners, which he's been very good at, and so the owners won't get rid of him. But in the long term, he's killing the game. Yeah. He's almost like the um, Scott Boris on the other side, the player's representative, the Scott Boris of the owners. He, you know, both, I think, do their best to put baseball in the backseat and use their own um, things that they're touting in the front seat. You know, they're putting their own players in front of baseball. Scott Boris does. Yeah. Uh, and they're they're both bad for the game in equal respects, I believe. Yeah, it's it's uh, you know, I mean, uh, and and like the author says here, I think it's Kevin Kiernan, yes, uh, formerly of the Post. Um, you know, the Juan Soto thing was bad enough, but the. This is really uh, getting to the heart of the matter, and and you wonder if this is really showing you what their plan is. You know, to to essentially dump the mine lease completely, and uh, so they save money on coaches, scouts, trainers. You know, all all the stuff that they usually have, and then they just have them all in. The street in uh, the uh, spring training complex and, and with one set of trainers or uh, coaches or whatever. But, um, you know, it's crazy. And, and and the whole thing is crazy. They're talking about so much money <clears throat> that could be lost by both sides, too. It's not just one side. I mean, your example of uh, Soto turning down $350 million dollars for 13 years and how old is he now is he uh i believe he's like 24 so 37 he he you know if he's still performing he could get another contract a smaller contract but and and you know what most of these contracts now they put escape clauses in so I don't know why he turned it down, but uh, I, I you don't know what these guys are looking for either anymore. But um, he wants to go. Uh, well, he's a Scott Boris guy, so there you go. That, that tells you right there. They yeah, don't like extensions. He's twenty three, so it would be a thirteen year deal, three hundred and fifty million dollars. And yes, he was advised by Scott Boris. Uh, he has control over the situation. That was a quote from him. Yes, they off yeah. made me an offer a few months ago before the lockout. But right now, quote, my agents and I think the best option is to go year by year and wait for free agency. I think that's lunacy, but uh, I, I'm for inking my name to a contract with $350 million. That's all you would need in your life twice. Even if it's four hundred million, what's the difference? I mean, the, <laughs> it's still massive money. You're committed to a team. It's greed. It's, about, it's the, yeah, it's a very it, greed that we're talking about. Yeah, it's about twenty-seven million, maybe a half less a year. You probably want thirty or more. 
and that's probably the reason. But um, I don't know. You know, it just you can't figure out these guys nowadays, and and uh, it it's just I I can't figure out what's going on on either side of this whole negotiation. I just can't. It just just doesn't seem right it it's and we're the ones that suffer because uh i don't care what anybody says the prices go up concessions will go up parking will go up ticket prices will go up because they want to keep they have to keep their profit margin so who pays at the end anybody that tells you it doesn't affect the consumer I mean, the government's been trying to tell us that the whole the last six months. That, oh, no, this inflation it doesn't bother you. You're making more money. No, you're not. It's getting eaten up by inflation. You're losing money. Uh, you know, they're trying to tell you it doesn't bother the consumer. It shouldn't. Well, of course it is. You think somebody that's making a product is, is all of a sudden going to have to pay more? For everything that it does, you don't think they're going to pass that on to us? And and we get hit from all sides because it's all the products, you know, with transportation, gas prices going up, um, all of that stuff. And then we get the uh, the rise, nobody else. So I don't I don't get it. I don't, you know, I I think. I, I think these unions got to wake up. These players have got to wake up. But you know what? There's some owner that's going to give them 300 or $400 million somewhere down the line. And, you know, and that kills everything because they say, see, the money's there. Yep. So... I don't know. I can envision in the future baseball being stripped down and, you know, a lot less teams because teams are not going to be able to uh, compete anymore. The prices of the athletes, it'll only be the richest teams. And all those teams that had major league, you know, uh, teams won't have them anymore. I don't know if I'll see it in my lifetime. I don't know if I'll see it in your lifetime. But I can envision that happening because, um, uh, you know, it's the way it's going. And and it's what Manfred's uh, doing. I can see them doing it, you know, like the pandemic, not playing in front of anybody so that the costs are cut down. You know, I can building small stadiums, taking the upper level off so they don't have to light it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I could see him going back to that, playing on, uh, you know, beautiful fields, but with nobody in attendance. Um, it seems that's the way he wants to play it, you know. Who knows? Yeah. Well, with this no baseball, I've uh, amused myself had to amuse myself with the date today, Gary. Uh, 02202022. That's a lot of zeros and twos. Oh, so that's today, huh? The big uh, <laughs> two, yeah. 22222. Yeah. As you say, Very that's cool. a lot of twos. Yeah, I had to uh, tweet that out on my fightinphillies.com <laughs> account because I can't tweet any baseball news. So. These little things yeah. that we get to keep ourselves amused with on the off season here, uh, as we're doing the podcast. But uh, yeah, last night I checked out the NBA All Star Weekend. Uh, very boring is what I took away from it for the <laughs> first <laughs> for the first half hour. It seemed like they were shooting around in pajamas or something. They had uh, uniforms on that were very drab. I was like, this is totally boring. Eventually, I guess they had a slam dunk contest, but I watched yeah. it for 20, 25 minutes and it was just a bunch of malarkey, you know, watching people take shots from, you know, three point land and, you know, no rhyme or reason to it. So I was, you know what? I, I, I agree. I, I think the first couple of years they did it, the slam dunk, it was something different and it was exciting. But how many slam dunks can you, you know, how many can you come up with? How many times can you twirl through the air, you know? 
Yeah. Can you fly to the basket? I mean, it it's it's over and done with. And though Maybe the I'm... three point shooting thing used to be interesting because you had a time limit. Yeah. And you had to run from uh, cart to cart full of basketball. That used to be interesting. I don't know if they still do it. I didn't think I put enough time into it last night because I, I was like, I, I just can't watch it anymore. It was and it was a good 20 to 25 minutes. There was no rhythm to it. There was no cadence to it. And it seemed like maybe just a warm up type of thing. And I guess eventually they got down to business. But uh yeah, we yeah. we have that to watch and some hockey still, but no baseball. Yeah, unless they start broadcasting like Dominican League or Winter League baseball. Well, sometimes somebody does. Uh, who was it one year was broadcasting some of those games? And then you'll have the college softball uh, start up. So we'll have to relegate ourselves to watching the. Uh, other things. That's it. You've got it. It's like the pandemic, Rich, all over again. That's well, true. You know, yeah, in a, in a different way. We'll be watching Netflix and and Amazon Prime and uh, Hulu and all of those and uh, seeing what's on there. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rich. Um, you know, there are some other news, though, and, and not all good. Uh, you remember the Tyler Skaggs case? They found him dead of an overdose, and uh, it got a little messy, and they arrested the Angels media director, and uh, he was on trial this past couple of weeks, and, and he was found guilty by a jury for distributing fentanyl and causing the death of former Angels pitcher Tyler Skaggs. Uh, currently, he's facing a 20-year sentence in prison. Um, the, uh, you know, uh, the U.S. attorney is involved. Uh, said that uh, several former Angel players, including Matt Harmy, C.J. Crone, Mike Morin, and Cameron Pedrosian, all testified that Kay had distributed pills to them as well. Um, the big name in all of that probably is Matt Harvey, the former Met and Angel, that he uh, he admitted that he used cocaine during his baseball uh, career, calling himself a partier and saying his former New York team never really asked him about it. Uh, same thing in Los Angeles. They never asked him about whether he was using cocaine. Um, it did come out later on, though, that the teams were not allowed to ask about that kind of thing that uh, they were hamstrung. Uh, still, something should have been done, I guess. He got immunity and testified that he had given uh, Percocet and other drugs, painkillers, to Skaggs uh, when they were teammates and that they had taken substances in the clubhouse and that Skaggs told him that he crushed and snorted oxycotin on on the toilet paper dispenser in the clubhouse bathroom. Um, you know, it's, we're back to the painkill. Now it's painkillers, Rich, uh, that Major League Baseball is worried about. And, of course, civil suits from the family will follow. And uh, now Harvey could face a, a suspension um, once the CBA is signed, and if he's signed, he is a free agent. This could make him uh, uh, persona non grata. He may not get a contract. And um, if he does get a contract, he could get suspended right away by the league for admitting drug use. So it it just, and in the end, the young man is still dead. And... Uh, it, it's drugs, but um, we haven't heard about these kind of hard drugs being used in baseball in quite some time. Yeah, terrible story coming out of baseball. Uh, and I thought they were tested on a regular basis, but I guess not. I mean, 
that's all we hear is baseball is being tested for, you know, steroids and things like that. But maybe they're letting other things slip by. I was very um, concerned to, to read this, you know. Uh, baseball is just like society. It's a mirror of society. And that's a big problem across the country. Probably one that we don't even understand how big it is and how terrible it is still. But uh, yeah, to hear from Harvey and of Skaggs apparently being under the influence of these drugs while they're playing even is, is even more amazing. And um, it sort of goes hand in hand with other problems, social problems that we've seen uh, throughout the country as well with the, uh, you know, different record deaths from overdoses and things. It's just, it's a horrible story for baseball. I was very um, mm -hmm. not ashamed to read about it, but felt sorry for the ones that went through it. Well, yeah. And, and as a Met fan and you see another, you know, we lived this, through this in the eighties with with Doc Gooden and uh, Daryl Strawberry. Both had problems with cocaine, and it really brought uh, their careers down. More so, Gooden uh, because he had a lot of problems trying to get off of it, and uh, they say he's clean now. Sometimes you see him; he doesn't look that good, but um, uh, you know, he, he says he's clean. I have no reason not to doubt him. And Strawberry uh, apparently has cleaned up his act. But uh, those two guys were heading for the Hall of Fame. I mean, with the numbers the first couple of years that they were putting up, they were Hall of Famers. And to see their career derailed and their lives derailed as well by this uh, these insidious drugs and, um, you know, here we are 30 years later or whatever it is, uh, 35 years later with the uh, Matt Harvey situation. And, and we're seeing it again. And the, the, my first thing was, oh, God, it had to be Harvey. It had to be an ex-Met. <laughs> right. Know? And um, that, that might explain some of the weirdness that was going on with Harvey as well uh, during his I, Mets career. And, uh, you know, in his personal life and on the field and his exit from the Mets, it'd be interesting to hear if more comes out on that story. But looking at the picture for that uh, employee for the Angels, uh, it doesn't exactly look like a drug pusher. And, he, he, <laughs> you know, I'm looking at the picture for the first time of the gentleman that's been convicted, Eric Kay, and uh, it does not look like a drug pusher. If you're well, typical, quote I, unquote, you know, I don't think he was your typical drug deal. I think he was one of these guys where he, you know, he probably wanted to get in with the players more and uh, was willing to do things for them. And, and, you know, the guy says, can you get me some Percocets or oxycodone? Because that stuff is uh, very. Uh, much controlled now and uh, maybe he had a way of getting it or he got some and he could slip them a couple of pills and uh, you know unfortunately I don't know why they would even take that fentanyl with all we know about it uh, but um, whatever uh, he gave him the pills for Maybe that's the reason. Who knows? You know, he just wanted to be accepted as one of the boys. You don't know, you know. And um, he got, he got. You know, unfortunately, Tyler Skaggs o overdosed or died on vomit, his own vomit. And, um, you know, this guy got dragged into it and, and gave him the pills and, and got the... Uh, got burnt on it and, and yeah and the interesting know, it was his, mm -hmm. it was i was just gonna say it's just his, it's his own stupidity uh in in getting involved but you know people get rich they want to be uh, uh like they want to be accepted 
you know, he wanted to get be in with the boys, maybe. Who knows? I mean, it's it's a terrible thing. Yeah, and the interesting thing about it is Matt Harvey was granted um, immunity from prosecution. He also provided Skaggs with uh, oxycodone pills. So, I mean, he was subpoenaed and testified only because he was granted immunity. He could be right with Kay right now in contributing right? to the death of somebody. And actually, maybe he should be knowing that what we know, but he was given a deal. So he was given a deal and he took it. And, yeah. Uh, so we have one guy that was convicted, but, you know, probably many that were involved in in this whole thing. So it's a black eye on baseball. But more importantly, somebody died. And, you know, it's a big problem within society. And it's just, you know, it's amazing, too, that it's on a team that has the biggest Boy Scout in the world on it. You know, it might, oh, pardon me, Mike Trout. Um, yeah, what was his you know, knowledge? It, 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 maybe he didn't know anything about it either. Yeah. You never know. I mean, it's possible these things go on and, and nobody knows anything all the time about what's going on in every corner of every clubhouse. I know a clubhouse is it's a small area and all of that, but uh, you still there are ways of getting away with stuff and and not knowing at all what's going on. Yeah, it's probably like a high school type of situation or college. You're there to do a job, and because you're in the building, you don't necessarily know everything that's going on. Yeah, but, um, bad news out of uh, Anaheim and for the Angels and Skaggs, his widow, uh, Harvey, even just, you know, stuff that you don't like to hear about. Yeah, it's all just uh, it, it's all just a shame. Yep. So let's move on to something a little more happy, so to speak, here on the. <laughs> A cold February day before uh, we start up spring training. Uh, baseball advertising has been in the news and uh, the possibility that the MLB would want to put advertising on helmets and jerseys. And there was an interesting um, mock up on what something like that may look like. I'll bring it up for our YouTube uh, watchers that are watching this on YouTube and that's what like a, a batting helmet might look like with the Ford logo on it or, um, you know, the caps that have the uh, MLB type of logos on them. But, you know, we might see this in, in the near future. And we've seen it already in um, Oriental baseball leagues like mm-hmm. Japan and Korea. I believe they already have this, but. I think time will be short before we start seeing like Chevrolet and Ford on some of these um, hats and jerseys. Uh, You already have the big Nike swish on there. So (laughs) I don't know what your feeling is about it, but uh, it's a sign of the times probably. It looks ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It should be nothing on the look. They got the new era logo on the hat. Okay, that that's the company, but um, I don't know. It looks terrible. It just looks awful. That hat there, the, the California Angels hat, looks terrible with some sort of ad, and the Ford ad on the helmet just looks ridiculous. I mean, it just, I don't know. Can we leave something a little bit sacred? If they want to put something on the on the shoulder, you know, that stupid Nike swoosh looks ridiculous where it is. It yeah. should have been put on the shoulder like Majestic had it and Rawlings had it and every other company had it there. Just put a little swoosh or put Nike, put your, your N-I-K-E, put it on the sleeve if you know, you don't think the people will know what the swish is. We see him. The, look at you. You see the swish there on the T-shirt. So what do we need it on the jersey for then? Yeah. Yeah, it does I mean, take it just, prominence there. It just looks ridiculous. It 
you know, it it doesn't look as bad in a hockey jersey or or a uh, uh, basketball uniform because it's a different style of uniform, and I don't think it looks as bad. They don't have, you know, they don't really have the spot on the shoulder as far as the basketball uniforms go. Um, so when it came up in basketball, it looked okay. It didn't. You really didn't notice it. It kind of blended in. But baseball, you got like you know, especially like the Yankees uniform. They got an NY here, and then that stupid swoosh. It, it just it's killing all the tradition, and I you know they're gonna kill the game. I hate to keep saying it, but these stupid ideas. And again, the owners are happy because you know they're making money hand over fist with Manfred. But he's killed. They're not looking at the long term prospects of the game. They're seeing everything now. The short term prospects. They're making money, but it's not good for the long term game. And I don't understand why they don't get that. Uh, just it, it amazes me. Yeah, and. I guess they see it as, you know, maybe revenue producing and everything's all about the bottom dollar these days. But uh, yeah, as you said, is nothing sacred anymore? Are we going to sell our soul to the devil? And they already have with the, yeah. with the gambling it's on, <laughs> it's yeah, on every, really... every sports show now. So it's, uh, you know, they've opened Pandora's box, so to speak. You know, I mean, it started with defenses. Okay, you know, I can live with defenses. They flash around. You see an m and You see the Coca-Cola, whatever. I, I can live with that. They want to put it all over the stadium. I got no, I have no problem with that. What drives me crazy is, though, now everything is, you know, and and there's a Verizon call to the bullpen. Um yeah. You know, and and uh, here's a Perina dog chow pinch hitter, uh, pinch runner going in, and that'll bring about the. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't, I'm looking around to see uh, the Purell uh, sanitary pinch runner. You know yeah. what I mean? Everything is is sponsored now, and it's just. And then they wonder why the games take so too long because they got to tell you all of this nonsense. <laughs> And it's just too much. It's just too much. I, I, you know, I don't know how advertising works exactly uh, on cable, but I know, like, I don't know if it's the first ad or the first two ads or something. The um, It's either the cable company gets the first two ads and then the other ad is the uh, the team or whatever, uh, or the show or the production company, or it's vice versa, right? But uh -huh. I, you get, don't you get a kick when you watch a ball game and it says and and the beginning of the game, and this game is brought to you by the local Ford dealers, right? And then you see a Volkswagen commercial. No offense. Uh, <laughs> Or you see a Chevy commercial. Well, well, if it's brought to me by Ford, why am I seeing a Chevy commercial? You know, yep. and I, I, I it's just, and then it's the same damn commercial every inning. Every inning, we, you, you know, you'd see the. the in here in New York would be the Sports uh, Sports New York, the SNY, the Met Station, the ch the cable channel, and every it would be a commercial for them every freaking inning, and it'd be the same three commercials. They they just rotate them throughout the game, and and I don't know. I just it, it just you know I hope they don't do this with the uh, the helmets. Then we're gonna have to see. Uh, Ford Motor Company or General Motors or Chevy or whatever or uh, you know uh, why don't they put the Joe's Extermination Service <laughs> you know we're going to see that I mean the smaller market teams may have to rely on that yeah yeah well you know you see it at the minor league games I mean um, 
I, I give you an example. Here's something. And it's it's cute. It's cute in the beginning for a while, but then it, it gets you crazy after a bit. Um, I mean, Brooklyn, they have a... Um, oh, what is it now? It's like a window company that advertises them, right? Yep. Um, and every time there's a foul ball... You hear crash, and and then you hear the theme song. I think it's unified. It's like unified, something like that. Okay? Uh-huh. So every time it's a foul ball, you ksh, unify. In other words, somebody broke a window. Call unify. Well, it's funny the first couple of times you hear it, but by the hundredth time, it's not so funny anymore. It's like, oh no, not that again. <laughs> not and that's that what mean. they, yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's what they do. And, you know, the money that they're talking about in this contract, and they're worried about the nickels and dimes in in putting a sticker on a helmet, it, it can't be worth it. It can't be worth the the, uh, the scorn of the fan. And But we'll see. I mean, if they think it's going to be worth it, they're going to do it. Yeah. Well. That brings us back to our show. I know I've been asking for, you know, listeners of the show to sign up with our sponsorship over at anchor.fm forward slash baseball talk radio show. And we're still waiting for you to join up. I think I might have to start a GoFundMe, Gary, for uh, <laughs> for the show. Maybe that'll be better to Maybe. accomplish. You know, one little simple thing we want to do is be able to stream to you live because we record this show live we don't typically do double takes unless we have a disaster that uh you know affects our audio or something like that or now the video that we're doing videos on these podcasts but you know we we would like to bring it to you live so it's um it's about 150 bucks to have zoom a zoom account to um be able to do that so maybe i'll have to set up that gofundme gary for our our listeners to help us because I know we'll accomplish it that way. But um, our show is brought to you by the baseball talk radio.com. It's a collection of 50 podcasts, all talking about our favorite sport that of course, baseball, check out Gary's other podcast called Mets musings. He had a great interview with an ex met the other day and uh, mine called Phillies talk podcast with Rich Baxter. And of course this show, the baseball talk radio show, it's, one of a number of different great baseball talk shows baseball and barbecue is on there with some great interviews all the time you like to do some barbecuing you're going to learn a lot from that show baseball phd with the great ed casputis and his gang uh farley dillinger among others and um we have a couple new ones on there (laughs) yes check it out baseballtalkradio.com um, one that I like, it's Cardinals baseball talk. They call it the best baseball podcast. And that's with uh, Derek Gould from the St. Louis post dispatch and a ton of other shows. So check it out. Baseball talk and, uh, even subscribe to our YouTube feed. Just search for baseball talk radio show. Yeah, and hit that subscribe and like button if you're watching us uh, because that helps the uh, analytics. The people at YouTube are very happy to see that on the analytics, and so are we. And uh, you can go to our Anchor page and leave a small donation if you'd like at anchor.fm slash baseball talk radio show or our Patreon page, uh, patreon.com slash baseball talk. And uh, soon, maybe uh, Rich will be announcing the GoFundMe page. To go <laughs> the GoFundMe to. for the live stream, yeah. <laughs> and and we will, we are, uh, you know, uh, if anybody's listening from Ford or any of the major corporations, <laughs> we're willing to wear hats with logos yeah. on it. Yeah, we're we just willing don't to. Wanna, we don't want to see it on our ball players. <laughs> Willing to do what it takes uh, for, you know, to stream to you all for you. It's going to go right back to your, you know, your benefits. So uh, check it out. Coming soon, the GoFundMe page for the baseball talk radio show. <laughs> but Gary, uh, some of the fallout 
from No Baseball down in Florida and Arizona has uh, Boston Red Sox Jet Blue Park hosted a open house just the other day um, when it was supposed to be the spart- start of spring training, but it's been delayed. Um, they opened their doors to the fans for little tours and things like that, being able to walk around the stadium because people made their plans in advance are already down there, like you said. So uh, sometimes you can't cancel these plans so easily. So the ballpark down there opened its doors. Uh, a lot of people from the uh, Buffalo, New York area was down there. Some other Red Sox fans from the Boston area and uh, a very nice, nice thing. That's awesome for the uh, Boston Red Sox to have been able to do that and uh, open their doors up to the fans. I know. Cause I, I was met with a lock on each stadium uh, back with the pandemic when they closed it down, it was, yeah. I think only the Yankees were still somewhat hanging on to a thread of uh, some workouts and things as I remember. And, uh, but everything else was, you know, you drive up to the stadium and you have to look at it from the outside, but kudos to jet blue park there for the Boston Red Sox with that opening house. Yeah, it's a smart move, and, and uh, you know, to keep people involved in, in uh, the fandom and all of that. Um, but, boy, they got to get they got to get something done here. This is just getting ridiculous now. People are getting disgusted. Yes, they are. So uh, we'll keep our eye open for you, Gary, unless you have anything else for the podcast this week, we're just going to keep an eye on the negotiations are supposed to be meeting day to day now, uh, starting this week. And hopefully, uh, that will accomplish a contract. I think they're going to both start saying that, Hey, we're, we're ruining this house of baseball by doing this, um, and being so stubborn with one another. Fingers crossed that they do that, that they see that, you know, uh, I don't know. There's a lot of animosity there between the two sides. So you just hope that they can pull it together and, and come to some kind of fair agreement to both sides. Absolutely. Well, thank you for tuning in to this edition of the Baseball Talk Radio Show, everyone. Have a great week. Send us an email or a voicemail through our website at anchor.fm forward slash baseball talk radio show. We'd love to hear from you. And We'll see you again next time on another edition of the Baseball Talk Radio Show.